Hello and welcome to the Riverside Radio YouTube channel. Now, since the start of the pandemic, health officials worldwide have been scrambling to find an effective form of treatment for the novel coronavirus. Here in the UK, it is no different, and today a very promising study was announced by central government using something called convalescent blood plasma therapy. The study will be looking into using convalescent blood plasma therapy for the sickest of patients on intensive care units. Well, in one of the first interviews with the media, I sat down with Dr. Manu Shankar Hari, who is one of the principal investigators based out of Guy's and St. Thomas's Hospital right here in our patch. He explained to me what convalescent blood plasma therapy was, how it was going to be used, and much more. Here's the interview. Enjoy. So, my name is uh, Dr. Manu Shankar Hari. I'm a critical care physician and an NIHR clinician scientist uh, working at Guy's and St. Thomas's Hospital. Um, I run a translational research group at King's College London, uh, focusing on immunology of sepsis. Sure. Uh, and what's your role within this uh, this study? So the the convalescent plasma trial is led from uh, NHSBT, uh, and I am one of the co uh, principal investigators of the study. So, in layman's terms, what exactly is this convalescent blood plasma trial? So. If you think about the uh, disease that we are dealing with, it is caused by a novel virus, which is SARS coronavirus 2. Um, and no human being has got immunity against this virus. Uh, what convalescent plasma is, is essentially those who recover from the virus uh, tend to have some immunity. And the idea is to pro use that uh, beneficial immunity that the survivors have, uh, use that uh, to give to patients who are acutely unwell to help clear the virus. Sure. So <clears throat> is it also something that could be used in a preventative method? Could it be given to people before they catch the virus and hope that it would stop the infection? So um, it's an interesting question. We, uh, theoretically, it is possible that you could identify those who are at risk. Let's say somebody who's got uh, some other condition that impairs their immune system, like cancer or chemotherapy or other things that impair the immune system, you could target those patients to uh, get convalescent plasma and give them immunity for 20, up to 21 days. Once you give a dose, it stays in blood. So you hope that that window will kind of prevent new infections. So it may be particularly useful when you want to uh, help certain population to come out of the um, restrictions that we have placed currently. Sure. So talk to me a little bit about what this study looks like. It's a it's a national study. Is that is that correct? That's correct. So this is a um, this study is a what is described as a randomized control trial. Uh, this randomized control trial is the highest level of evidence generation in terms of the clinical testing. So what happens is that patients get randomized to receive either the convalescent plasma or a standard of care in hospitals as they receive today. And what we are looking for is those who get convalescent plasma will do better in terms of their clinical outcomes compared to those who just get standard of care. Uh, some of our viewers will say, you know, this is untested. How do we know it's going to work? What kind of adverse effects could there be? Mm. So in, uh, it's absolutely right. This is untested for SARS coronavirus. And uh, that's why uh, the CMO's office have highlighted that you need to test every drug before giving it. Every drug, everything that we use have got a side effect. So in terms of side effects of plasma, uh, plasma contains other blood components, uh, such as other immunoglobulins, uh, proteins that are linked to blood clotting. So um, all of those could influence the way somebody's body responds to it. Monitoring. So we are planning to monitor all the adverse events and report it uh, in both those patients who receive standard of care and those who get convalescent plasma. Sure. At the risk of trying to uh, run before we can walk, how long will it be before we can kind of definitively say, yes, this is going to be a treatment that could really change the course of this pandemic? Mm, OK, I think so. the answer, the honest answer is uh, very difficult to kind of say uh, at this stage. So we are testing those little interactions. Uh, when you pull all of these things together, I think this is probably the most efficient way to generate evidence in the context of a pandemic. Um, in the next three to six months, we should have a reasonable chance of saying one way or the other whether this is likely to work. So it brings me on really nicely to um, 
we will obviously have listeners at home who are regular blood trans, uh, blood uh, donors and so on. How can people get involved? Do they have to have a positive test for COVID-19 to be able to offer their blood plasma? How can the community get involved? I think the uh, NHSBT, the National uh, Blood Transfusion uh, Centre, they have a web page uh, that gives a clear idea of how to get in touch and who to get in touch with. But, you know, we're, we're what, four or five weeks into this now. Why are we only starting the treatment now? In terms of why it has taken us uh, so long to get there, as I said, you know, convalescent plasma has to come from patients who recover. Uh, there has to be a method to identify these patients. Not all of us who recover will have immunity strong enough against the virus. As a new virus, we don't know what is the right kind of immunity we need. So we need some preliminary testing uh, against that. And we don't know what's the right time to collect the convalescent plasma. And we also need to make sure that the patients are uh, and the donors who come in are um, provided a safe environment to give the convalescent plasma uh, to collect, store, process, uh, aliquot and send it in the context of a trial. Sure. Um, bit of a point blank question. Do you think this treatment will save lives over the course of the pandemic? Well, as a, um, as a ICU doctor, I think uh, it has the potential uh, to save lives because it's a, it's a, many of the things are known about what we are trying to do. Um, as a somebody doing the trial, I need to have equipoise, uh, otherwise I wouldn't be doing the trial. Um, if I did not have equipoise, if I fundamentally believe that this is the only thing that will save lives, I wouldn't be doing the trial. So I'm not certain, uh, but equally on balance, I think this is a, invest, this is a kind of treatment worth investigating in a way that will help uh, future patients. And that was the interview. Thank you so much for tuning in to watch it. Uh, if you were as, as fascinated in Dr. Shankahari as I was, we will be releasing the full 20-minute interview on Riverside Radio at 4 p.m. today. To listen along, just go to riversideradio.com forward slash listen. And if you're catching this a few days late, not to worry. Just go on Mixcloud or Soundcloud and search Riverside Radio. We will be uploading it from about 4.30 today. Those of you who want to get involved and donate blood plasma, the link to the NHS blood and transplant team is right here in the box below, along with all of our social media handles. Please do like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can keep you updated with all of the fantastic content we will be bringing you during the lockdown and beyond. And remember, stay home, protect the NHS, and save lives.